Greetings once again from my hobby farm in northern Minnesota as I continue my series of little videos connecting Torah with nature. Today I'm going to talk about a story in the Torah, in the Bible, that the atheist missionaries love to use to try and debunk the whole thing. Used to be the only missionaries I had to deal with were Christians banging on my door telling me about Isaiah 53 or whatever. But now it seems the atheists have decided to take the Bible totally literally the same way the fundamentalists do, only their agenda is to say it's a bunch of bunk fairy tales. The story I'm referring to is about the talking donkey. No, it's not exactly like that. But before we can talk about this story, let's review it. A lot of times when I ask people, do you know what the story of the talking donkey is? They, no, no, I don't know. I just heard this. Something. Okay, here's the story. And this takes up two whole chapters in the Bible, so I'm going to have to put it very short. Okay, the Jews are coming out of Egypt after the Exodus. King Balak has heard that this large, shall we say in modern terms, caravan of immigrants is about to cross through his kingdom, and he's concerned about this. He's also heard that these Jews fought with the Amorites and they won the battle, so he knows that they have a good army. He's not sure his army can beat them, so he resorts to what many pagan kings did in those days. He hires a sorcerer to curse the people, and that is Bilam, or Balaam, as you might know him in English. He said, King Balak sends messengers to Bilam, says, I'd like you to come and curse these people. Bilam tells the messengers, wait a minute, I want to sleep on this. You stay overnight, and tomorrow morning I'll give you my answer. Next morning he says, no, God told me not to do it. I'm not doing it. And they go back to King Balak. But Balak doesn't take no for an answer. He figures, ah, this guy's just bargaining with me. I, I'm not, he wants me to up the offer. Okay, fine. He sends a whole caravan of royalty and messengers and, and treasure and all kinds of things to, to Bilam and says, please come and do this. Now, here's where Bilam's downfall is. He's tempted by all this wealth. Once again, he says, oh, all right, all right, I'll go with you. You know, and he does that. Well, the thing is, on the way, there's an angel that stands in the middle of the trail trying to stop him. The donkey sees the angel. Bilam doesn't see it. There's some satire in that. This guy's supposed to be a great mystic. He doesn't see the angel, but his donkey does. The donkey goes off the trail into a field. Bilam hits the donkey with a stick or whatever, gets him back up on the trail. The donkey goes off next time and bangs him into a wall. And Bilam hits him, gets him back on the trail. And finally, the donkey just lies down and refuses to move. Bilam is beating the donkey. And at that point is when the donkey says, why are you beating me? You know, I've been, you know, your donkey all these years. Have I ever done this before? And then the story continues from there. Now, the literalist will say this is impossible. A donkey can't talk. It doesn't have the right kind of mouth parts, etc., etc., etc. But there are other ways to understand this story. Now, one of my atheist friends said to me, no, 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 you can't interpret a sacred text. It says what it says. That's it. I'm sorry, my friend, but no, that's not the way it works. A sacred text is not a mathematical formula. It can have many layers of meaning. And all of these layers of meaning can be true at the same time. In Judaism, we say there are basically four ways to understand any text. There's, first of all, the literal meaning, pishat, we say in Hebrew. That's the literal meaning. And then there's the implied meaning, remez. And we have the homiletical or moral of the story meaning, that's drash. And finally, there's the mystical meaning, the secret of the story, which is sowed. I'm going to go through each of these four levels with the donkey story and show you how, with references to classical Jewish sources, this story has been understood in many ways within the Jewish tradition. On the literal level, you know, it says, the text literally says, and God opened the donkey's mouth. 
Well, then words follow that, and so people assume that the donkey is speaking with words. And in fact, there is a Talmudic reference in a text called Pirkei Avot that says that the mouth of the donkey was one of the miracles that was created on the sixth day of creation right before the Sabbath. Now, miracles, you can either prove them or disprove them. You know, that's not, Jews don't put a lot of stress on trying to prove things by miracles, but if you want to believe literally, then it was a miracle. So that would be the literal level that God miraculously gave the donkey the ability to speak. Believe it or not, it's actually starting to snow. <laughs> Rabbi Nachman says when you try and do a good thing, do a mitzvah, you know, there'll be obstacles. Well, this is my obstacle for the day, I guess. It's actually snowing. Leaves are green on this tree, but it's snowing. Go figure. The second level, remez, is the implied level. You know, a text might say something that doesn't make sense literally. And when you find that, it's a clue that you're supposed to look deeper. For example, if it says, circumcise your heart, it does not mean you hire a surgeon to cut your chest open and chop off a piece of your heart. Of course not. The circumcision represents the covenant with God. So to circumcise your heart means to bring your whole self into God's covenant, to God's laws, to God's teachings, etc. So let's look at this for the donkey story. The donkey is making some kind of sounds. Now, the text tells us that the donkey says to Bilam, am I not the donkey that you've had all these years? Have I ever done this to you before? So from this, we know this is not an animal that uh, King Balak provided in the caravan. It's not an animal that... Uh, Bilam rented or just bought. This is an animal he's very familiar with. Now, people who work with animals learn to interpret the sounds and the body language and the actions of their animal. But they might describe the story in terms of words. Many times I have said, my cat told me he wanted to go outside. Now, did the cat come up and say, come on, you want to sit? Oh, open the door. I want to go out. I got to go. go, go. Of course not. But the cat meows a certain way, he rubs against my leg, he runs to the door, etc., etc., etc. And I know from these actions the cat wants to go out. When I tell the story, I might say the cat said he needed to go out. So it's possible that Bilam, in telling this story later, attributed words to the mouth of the donkey, but that what really came out of the donkey's mouth were donkey sounds. Drash, the third level, is the level of interpretation, level of homily, level of the moral of the story. What do we learn from this? And there can be many, many different ways to read this. In fact, this is the verse that Jewish law cites for the prohibition against cruelty to animals. Bilam is being very cruel to his animal for really no reason, you know. But even if there is a reason, you're not supposed to be cruel to an animal. And that's based on this story. I recently read a more modern interpretation that uh, this could be a victim who speaks out about being victimized. You don't just lay there and take it. You speak up about it. You protest about it if you're being abused. There's many other ways to interpret this. And on this level, it doesn't matter whether the story is literally true, symbolically true, a parable or whatever. It's what you get out of it for your own life. We come now to the fourth level, the level of sod, the mystery, mysticism. And for this, I'm going to cite the teachings of Maimonides, also known as Rambam, who wrote in the 12th century, that's the 1100s, a thousand years ago, that when we have these stories of God speaking or of angels appearing along the road or whatever, that these are taking place in dreams and visions, not on the physical level. So if we go back to the beginning of the donkey story, Bilam tells the first set of messengers from King Balak, stay the night and I'll give you an answer tomorrow. God tells him in the middle of the night not to go. 
And so he says, I can't go. And we can assume that might have been a vision or a dream. The second set of messengers tempts him with wealth and power, and so he agrees to go, but he's conflicted. God has told him not to go, yet he's going with these guys. Now let's assume that he's riding along the trail on the back of the donkey in a long caravan, and he falls asleep in the saddle. And he has this dream in which this donkey is seeing the angel that he's not seeing. And finally the angel appears and tells him, Go with these men, but only say what I will give you to say. And ultimately, at the end of the story, it turns out that Bilam blesses the Jewish people rather than cursing them, because when the moment comes and he's up there on top of the mountain with the altar and all of that stuff, the words that come out of his mouth are a blessing. So these are four different ways that you can understand this, the literal, the implied, the allegorical, or the mystical. And in the mystical, there's one more possibility, and that is Bilam, after all, was supposed to be a sorcerer, a mystic, a magician, whatever. So let's assume he also has some ESP ability, and maybe the donkey communicated in his mind. I'll tell you a story in my own life. Years ago, I had a dog named Shunka, which means dog in the Lakota Indian language. And he would walk with me in a certain route. We'd go down past the chicken coop, circle through the woods, circle back to the road, come back to the house, etc. When Shunka was getting old, one day he lay down next to the chicken coop. And I heard clear as a bell in my mind, I can't do this anymore. The dog got up and walked back to the house. And the next day, Shunka was dead. Interpret that however you want. Maybe I noticed that my dog was getting old and tired and not moving as well. Or maybe my dog in some way did communicate with me and I interpreted that in my own mind as words. Bottom line is, there are many ways to read these stories. It doesn't have to be literal like a mathematical formula.